Warning, Marriage on the Rocks provides unfiltered, unconventional, and sometimes unwelcomed relationship advice. Seth and Crystal are certified relationship coaches who have adopted specific methods that work very well for them. Your results may vary. (laughs) Hey everyone, welcome to our 40th episode of Marriage on the Rocks. I'm Crystal. And I'm Seth. Every week we have a drink with our discussion, and this week we wanted to do a shot and a drink. Yeah. So we um, actually just recorded uh, yeah, so making shot. the shot. Everybody that's watching this now probably would have seen the, the we'll video see on the video. how I made the, the woo-woo shot. Yeah, woo-woo. It was a woo-woo shot. So yeah, it's a, that, was, that was pretty tasty. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. It's a vodka, peach schnapps, and cranberry. Mm-hmm. Mainly vodka. Yeah. But mm-hmm. you taste the peach schnapps over everything. Yeah. But it was red like cranberry juice, so mm-hmm. it's pretty smooth. Yeah, it is. And then for our actual drink, we decided we're get, we're doing another bullet drink. Mm-hmm. Um, we've well, got like a couple left. Yeah, we're kind of winding down <clears> to <throat> the, yeah. that bullet, the bullet drink uh, little menu. This probably would have been better for summer. Yeah. Um, but we had to finish going off the list, so this is a... A bullet... A bullet mule. mule. Yeah. yeah. It's make it the same way you would a Moscow, a, a Moscow mule, but instead of vodka, you use whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've never had a. Yeah, I haven't even tried it yet. Yeah, a, so. one with whiskey. You've only had the vodka kind. And I love the vodka ones. That was like a taste of the lime and the, the ginger beer. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's whiskey, half a lime squeezed in there, mm-hmm. uh, and then topped off with ginger beer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I could taste the whiskey now. Can you? Yeah. I used the barrel strength, so. Yeah, that's good. I should have doubled up. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we'll start off with Seth's dumbass post of the week. We actually um, found it looking while we were getting prepared for, for the actual episode and what we're going to talk about today. And we came across this and we're like, oh, this is stupid. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. That'll tie in exactly with what we're going to talk about. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so this one was, the more you love someone, the more they get under your skin. Yeah. And this is this is very common with a lot of the themes that we've, I guess, spoken against mm-hmm. with the, you know, I, I, I love you, but I hate you type of thing where it's it's almost this, this weird, um, insulting and kind of, you know, just unhealthy way of looking at why you dislike your partner. Yeah. You know, it, it's the, uh, I, I'm, I just love you so much I can't stand you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's not, I mean, think about that for a, mer- a minute. I mean, you, you shouldn't be with someone you can't stand. Yeah. Um, and you're not allowed to say you love someone that you can't stand either. I know. Because love should be unconditionally. And I think people tend to look at that like, well, I do love them unconditionally because I put up with all of their shit that I <laughs> yeah. can't stand and uh-huh. I still love them. Right. And I think that sometimes people just mean, well, I don't want them dead. Uh, I know. <laughs> it's this weird thing. It's like, it's like, well, I don't, I don't wish that they weren't here anymore, but I hate everything about them. And so that means I still love them. And it's like, well, no, that's, that's so stupid. It's a very, very odd way that you see people handle and participate in relationships. Uh-huh. Um, well, I think you see that e- even like with families mm-hmm. and stuff where, well, you have to love them because, you know, be- you have to love her because she's your mother. You have to right. love him because be- he's your father. It's like, no, yeah. you really don't have to. You don't have to love anyone. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that, that's, that's the funny thing about it is, is these have tos. You don't have to, but that, that's something that people are told. Well, you mm-hmm. have, you have to love them because of the stuff you just said. Well, no, you don't. I mean... Love is, is something you have to continually earn, mm-hmm. and it has to be reciprocated. Yes. I think that's the, I, that's the biggest yeah. part. Is and when that's not happening, you know, ain't got to love shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, with that being said, what we're going to be talking about today is just pet peeves. So, we... We've seen a lot of people out there do, like, you'll, you'll see the videos on YouTube of couples that are like, oh, see, this is what I had to do because my partner mm-hmm. wouldn't do this. So, you know, you see them 
nitpicking at each other yeah in through on youtube and you see these videos or um you hear other podcasts of couples that just can't stand each other and Mm -hmm. They're saying what they hate about each yeah. other. They'll spend an hour listing off all the things they don't like about one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How healthy is that? Right. At least, at least they're telling each other. <laughs> at least they are communicating. <laughs> that's the, I guess that's the biggest thing. Yeah. But, but we wanted to talk about these things. And yes, I mean, there's lots of things. Everybody can, has their own annoying little mm-hmm. things that they do. Um, but yeah, we wanted to, to kind of I try in. too hard. I love too much. <laughs> I care too much. Those are all pet peeves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. We wanted to talk about it. And, uh, I mean, maybe even, you know, some of our, some of the stuff from our previous relationships too. Well, and, and, and there, and, and really look and discuss how, how the appropriate way to handle them that is constructive and healthy mm-hmm. and still progressing forward. Because we don't feel that you should, you know, we, we, we've been, we've of course been very outspoken about you shouldn't be in a relationship where you make it work. Mm-hmm. And, and this kind of gets lumped into that a lot where, yeah. well, they do A, B, C, D, and E that I all hate, but... They're a great dad, so I put up with it. You know, or wh- whatever they, they fill in there to right. do that. And there's a different way to handle it than either gutting it out or, or putting putting up with it. Because if you're in the very early phases of your relationship, engagement, living with one another, married, whatever. I mean, even, even if you want to look at the first five to eight years of that, whatever is kind of annoying now, picture how annoying that that's going to be. 30 years down the road. I know. And that's where you get those old couples on YouTube that are like, I can't wait till you're dead. And yeah, I know. <laughs> things like that. Yeah. And, and so you, but there's a much better way of handling it than just bottling it up mm-hmm. and, and snapping. And, and of course, one of the incorrect ways is you know, what you alluded to with the, the videos that you see on YouTube with. I mean, and, and I see them because women share them. Mm-hmm. Um, married women that I'm friends with share them or comment on them or like them or are tagged in them mm-hmm. or tag their husbands in them yeah. and I don't know if I'd say they're insulting but I, I remember watching the one of the one lady that like whipped out her phone and was like basically my, my here's our pantry my husband said he didn't know where the chips were can oh. you all see the chips can you see the chips because I see the chips this drives me nuts he can't ever find and, and she just goes off and it's like First of all, you shouldn't, if you're having an issue, you shouldn't be blasting it on social media, Uh even for entertainment purposes like Uh that, Um, because that video had like 10 million views. Yeah. And what ends up happening is if you continually call your partner or your husband or whoever is this worthless moronic idiot, you look like the bigger idiot for (laughs) staying in that relationship. Yes, I know. And all of these other women that are like, oh my God, sister, that's my husband too. You all collectively look like a bunch of fucking morons. (laughs) Yeah, yes. Yes, thank you. So. (laughs) I know. That's so funny. Well, and I think we've, we've even shared a video on our page of, remember that woman that was like cleaning the sink with her hand? Yeah. And all that. And and followed, like, basically picked up after her husband. Uh, yeah, she like wiped the sink up and... Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she did a whole bunch of different... Yeah, a whole things. bunch of little chores that... Of basically doing damage control for what... All of these annoying things that he did. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. Putting the toilet paper on the roll. Putting the lid down to the toilet. You know? Uh-huh. Wiping his hair out of the sink. Whatever it was. It was these things which... We believe that when you look at... at at the the pet peeves, those annoying issues or personal habits and traits, there's differences mm-hmm. within those. And there there are some things that you know I believe are trainable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's other things that that's what you get. Yeah, that's yes. that's who they are. Uh-huh. I mean, and, and so I think really, that, they can't really help it. Yeah, they they can't help that. And so mm-hmm. doesn't mean you don't talk about it. Doesn't mean you still don't try to find a solution. But it's it's just different yeah. than. You know, something that somebody's not doing or doing incorrectly is very fixable. Mm-hmm. But there's certain things about a person's makeup, you know, physically, whatever it may be, that 
and as we talk about it, people understand more, but those are things that are either harder to control or I don't want to say uncontrollable, but take a much deeper solution than mm-hmm. just put the fucking toilet lid down, you know, yeah. or whatever it is. Right. So uh-huh. they, 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 there's different ways to approach it with varying outcomes that uh-huh. can happen. But, you know, as even as you alluded to with the other couple, talking about it is, is key. Uh-huh. Yes, definitely. Um, well, so I remember when, when you and I first got together, and I remember telling you early on the how to put the toilet paper on the mm-hmm. on the roll or the roll of toilet paper on I the roll. I thought you were about to say how to put the toilet paper on the right way. I, I was expecting you to say that. Oh yes, the right way. It is the patented way. <laughs> it is yes, yes, and um, I think I think initially like you blamed your mom and you were like. I no. think that's how my mom did it. Oh, I don't. And then I, I was like, and then I was like, no, your mom does it right. <laughs> well, I, I, I blame the cat. Yeah, and then I you said, said the cat. I said you've never lived with the cat. Uh-huh, and I because if, I if you, the the correct way, and, and this is highly <laughs> debated, but the correct way is paper rolling out mm-hmm. over the top and down. Uh-huh. My push or not really, I don't. Fucking care which way the toilet paper goes. Well, I care. Yeah, so I do it the way that you like. Uh I don't care. It doesn't matter to me either way. But so when she brought it up, I was like, okay, well, okay, I'll start putting it on this way. That's fine. Uh But I had said, well, you've obviously never lived with cats because if you live with a cat and you have it down there and they hit it, they're (laughs) unrolling the entire thing. (laughs) Yeah. When if it's the other way around, if they have to grab the backside, but Uh usually it'll just kind of spin. Uh, But you don't waste an entire roll of toilet paper. Right. Um. And I don't like cats, but my ex-wife had two of them, so uh-huh. that was... I don't know if that was why we had it that way, right. or if it was just... Uh-huh. I don't know. It was one of those things I'd never really even thought about until you brought it up. Uh-huh. But I think that you'll find a lot of things with women's, I guess, beef with how guys do stuff is that exact same process. Well, I've never thought about it before. Yeah. I've just I've just done that. Uh-huh. I, I've just... I mean, and, we were even talking about the toilet lid thing, yeah. and you were like, you closed the entire thing. Uh-huh. And I was like, no, I think I just put the seat down uh-huh. for you. And you were like, no, you closed the whole lid. Yeah, he closes the whole thing. And I was like, do I? And I do, which, uh-huh. you know, once again, 110% right here. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> yes. But I've just always done it, and so uh-huh. I never really thought about about what it was I did. But right. while that can work in a positive way, uh-huh. like I do with toilet seat, it can work in a very negative way for people that do things that, you know, they're just used to doing. Yeah, I know. Well, I know, and you're just, yeah, because you were just used to doing that, mm-hmm. period. And I guess I I would venture to say that your mom raised you right and <laughs> raised you to put the toilet seat down whenever mm-hmm. you got done, you know, but like, yeah, I mean, there's guys out there that will leave it up Mm -hmm. all the time and they're just used to doing it that way. And I mean, for someone like me that grew up in a household full of of women and just one guy, Mm -hmm. the guy, it was going to put the toilet seat down all the time. (laughs) And I think that, I think that that's a big one for, for women. Is the toilet seat. Yeah, but do you think it's too big? And I, and I don't know if it's just because I'm a guy. Uh-huh. But it's... I mean, that that's... I mean, there, that's there's, a big pet There's a very, very funny episode of South Park about the toilet lid. Uh-huh. And you see this dynamic of the mother, one of the kids, of Clyde, throwing a fit. When his friends are there, she's yelling at him. She shows up at school to tell him he didn't shut the lid. And, you know, everybody just kind of dismisses it. And then she falls in. And it kills her. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, even at the funeral, the women talking at the funeral, they get up there and they're like, you know, I hope everybody learns that it's just a simple task of putting the lid down. It just takes a couple of seconds. And then the next guy comes up and he talks about how tragic this is. And, and yes, we do acknowledge that it only takes a couple of seconds. So if it is really that big a deal to the women who need the seat down, just go ahead and put it down yourself. <laughs> and so you, you tend to see this like what's what's. Whose responsibility is it? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the toilet's natural state is seat down, lid down, closed. Mm -hmm. So just return it to its natural state. Yeah. Yes. I'm not one of the 
dumbass guys that's like, well, you put the seat down. I don't need it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not an idiot, so <laughs> I get it. Yeah. But the toilet's natural state it's, is closed. Yeah. So just close it. Uh-huh. The whole thing. I mean, you wouldn't take the top off the back of the toilet to work on it and leave it off. Mm-hmm. The natural state is the lid on. Mm-hmm. Right. So just put the lid back. Yeah. I know. It's not rocket science. Uh-huh. But that, that is a huge pet peeve from women. It is. Which uh-huh. guys should be completely trainable in that and, aspect. Yeah, exactly. And they, and they, uh, it's, they're, com- they're completely trainable with the whole thing. But they also, it, like the South Park episode, they both are like, well, or some pe- some guys can be real, you know, adamant about, well, you can close it too. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, dude, <laughs> just have some courtesy yeah. for your wife, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think the toilet seat is a big one. Yeah, well, well when you look at couples' pet peeves, the, this is always up at the top mm-hmm. for what women say. Yeah. Drives them nuts as their husband doesn't shut the the toilet lid. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's it's so funny like just with with certain certain pet peeves and stuff and just stuff that annoys you period like I I know me with my ex one thing that would get on my nerves is he would hack <laughs> like yeah. like yeah. trying to, you know, spit hack a loogie all yes, the time. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's just gross. And it was constant, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, like, how often? Well, and he was probably doing it, not even noticing he was doing Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. So, yeah, there's those little things. And and if if you tell somebody about that. Well, that didn't help in that case, did it? Well, I think that the biggest thing is that it probably ended in a fight where... (laughs) You know, so telling him didn't work, or did you just wait until you just got so annoyed? Yeah, until I got so annoyed, and I so I didn't do what was right Mm. with it, you know. I didn't say right away, like, dude, that's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. Can you please not do that? Yeah, yeah, and I think there's there's a right and a wrong way to handle it, Mm -hmm. and I think unfortunately, people don't bring it up early enough. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I said, even with with the the analogy of 40 years down the road, it doesn't even have to be that far. Mm -hmm. If you're putting up with somebody's annoying little behaviors that can change and you're dating, they're not just going to wake up one day and decide to not do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to call it out. But once again, is it something that they can change? Is it something that is worth you potentially getting in a fight about Mm -hmm. is it something worth you having to constantly bring up and and i think you can look at that and and really you know just i'm a big pick your battles kind of person Mm -hmm. and i think that you know i look at things like well is the juice worth the squeeze and and when you're gonna have that type of argument is it is it really worth getting into it and and for some people it is i mean and like from from me and i think from a guy's perspective the toilet lid thing for Guys, it's like, well, it's not worth getting in a fight about, so I'll just do what you want or mm-hmm. or not. But then you get – but the woman doesn't feel the same way. She's like, I, damn it, you're going to do exactly what I tell you to do with this toilet lid, and I'm tired of telling you. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes this kind of chase to catch them doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of guys are like, you know what, you're making a big deal of nothing. Now I'm going to purposely leave it up. Yeah. And so there, there ends up being this retaliation thing mm-hmm. um, that can occur. And I think that you, you run that risk with a lot of the pet, the pet peeves. But the, the absolute worst time to bring it up is while it's going on mm-hmm. and you're irritated about it. While it's going on and you're ir- – yes, I would say – You don't kick your husband in the back while he's snoring and say flip on the light and say, this is bullshit, I can't take this anymore. Uh-huh. Stop snoring. Well, okay, but that's not the time to bring it up. Yeah, I, no, I agree with that. But I think that um, telling them right when when it happens, like with like with the toilet seat, maybe not the snoring and waking him up. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe the next morning for the snoring thing. Right. You know, gosh, babe, I wish yeah, you I know. didn't sleep at all last yeah. night. Yeah. You know, maybe. Well, if we'll, and we'll get into the yeah. snoring because I <laughs> right. have a different perspective. But with the toilet seat thing, I think that you need to tell them. 
right away, like, hey, like, do yeah, you realize that you're leaving the toilet seat up? But the problem with, with that is, you, you, what I even see it in my mind is a woman walking in there 10 minutes after the husband's going to the bathroom. And it's like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. You left it up again. And like, it's not a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yelling at your partner, even if it's the 500th time you brought it up, isn't going to be productive. Yeah. And, and people think that the louder they get and the angrier they get, the better results they'll get. Yeah. And that's just flat out not the case. Uh -uh. Um, there's a right way to have a conversation. There's a right way to approach a sensitive subject or a subject that could lead to an argument and there's a complete wrong way mm -hmm. and screaming at the top of your lungs is the absolute wrong way yeah starting to point out multiple flaws in your partner is the wrong way mm -hmm. getting on social media in a chat or a, a group bitch session about all the annoying things your husband does is the wrong way to handle it mm -hmm. tagging them in a video is the wrong way to handle <laughs> yeah. it yeah i know jeez um men so don't respond to humiliation very well I yeah I know that's true they don't and I don't know why women continue to to try well, because to all that. other women do it it's a it's a tribal thing yeah. it's oh well Susan bitches about her husband doing this and Janet does too and so does Karen and, and Karen's the biggest bitch out of the group and so if she's leading the pack we're all gonna complain about what's going on yeah and then they just feed off of each other's miserable lives lives and caveman husbands and uh -huh. whatever the issue is um, when you need to pull that aside and just make it between you two. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yes, you do. Now share what you did. Okay. I think there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, my husband used to do that and here's how he stopped doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But then you, but then there's the women that are like, that doesn't work. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. That's whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. They'll always come up with an excuse why something didn't work out the way it should have. Yeah. So, like, with, with all of, with the pet peeve stuff, like, there, I, I know that I do dumb, weird little things or whatever. I'm, I'm aware of the stuff that I, that I do. I'm just thankful that it doesn't annoy Seth, <laughs> the stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. And same thing for you with me. Like, right. we, I mean... You know, no, but every, like I said before, everybody has... Has something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's just, hopefully it doesn't annoy your partner. Mm hmm And, um, like, one, because there's, I mean, there's so many things that do annoy me, though. Like, and swallowing loud when drinking, mm -hmm. like, gulping, I guess. Yeah, you get... I get, get irritated. So, so, to the point that I'll do it on purpose. Yeah. Just to just watch to your face. tease me and yeah. my face. If it's super quiet in the house <laughs> and we've just gotten home from somewhere and I've got a drink in my hand, I'll... Mm, mm. Oh, it's so cool. You're, you're like, oh, what do you do? Stop. <laughs> you get all mad. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that you're joking. Though. Right. And yeah. I know that... And that would just bug the hell out of me if someone really was. Mm -hmm. Like, you really were like that. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm the same way. You know, I, I, I grew up with that at my dinner table mm -hmm. a, as a kid, and it was just... And finally, like, I, I had even hit a, a breaking point with my dad, and I was like, why are you swallowing so loud? And I was young. <laughs> and he looked at me, and I, he was... He blamed that he had his tonsils taken out. Oh, really? For it. But he... He drank every liquid, liquid like a kid coming off the playground and having a cup of Kool-Aid in their hands. Holding it like this and... Mm. Um, 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 um. I mean, just... Oh, God. It was just constant. <laughs> it could be sipping on hot coffee. It could be drinking milk. It could be drinking gate, Whatever it was. Yeah. It was it was loud. Uh -huh. And, you know, we didn't watch TV while we ate. We didn't have music on. So you were just there to listen to everybody chew and swallow. Uh-huh. Which... Is annoying. Yeah, I know. I, I can't I can't eat in complete silence. Uh -huh. And I, I, I don't think a lot of people do anymore because everybody watches TV when they eat. Right. But that was definitely a downside of the family around the table. Mm -hmm. Because if one of you chewed loud or hit your teeth with the fork the whole time. Oh my gosh, my mom would Or do scrape that. your teeth yeah, with, the fork, scrape your teeth with the fork every bite. Like, oh. and, or smack. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 uh -huh. still, I still, even to this day, get amazed with 
everywhere I go on the road, the amount of people that just don't know how to eat with proper etiquette. Yeah. And and I'll, I'll look over and... With their mouth open, gross. Every bite. Ugh. And I'm like, I just want to go over there and smack them back in the yeah. head. Close your fucking mouth. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, and these are grown adults. Uh-huh. And, and it's people sometimes just, I don't know if they quit learning that stuff or somebody quit teaching it or, or what. But yeah. So, the, but those things, those noises and, and chews and swallows things, that those are, I think those are things that people get very upset about. But I really don't know if that's something that somebody can change either. Yeah. You know, I think take smaller could, bites. Yeah, and they could be more aware. Yeah, be a little more self-aware doing, of what they're you doing. You know, like, okay, well. Yeah. And, and it always, it sucks because most of the time it, it is going to be that breaking point moment where the person, the other person has just had enough mm-hmm. and they do go off on them. And then they're going to feel self-conscious around anybody. Right. You know how they're how they're eating and and all that and I I mean <laughs> I think that those are like kind of harder conversations to have mm-hmm. with one another like so you don't hurt someone's feelings. Well, it, it's a flaw. Mm-hmm. Any any time you're pointing someone's flaws out, mm-hmm. it's you're you're running the risk of hurting their feelings. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, you, like you said, you want to save them from further humiliation from other people. And yeah. that, that's one of those things that you know, anybody that's worked in an office environment, anybody that has those annoying habits or loud habits or things that distinguish who they are because of their horribly annoying laugh that they can't change, mm-hmm. their, um, their tone of voice, their way they blow their nose, the way they sneeze, the way excuse me, all those things happen, that's what they get labeled as. Mm-hmm. Be like, oh, is, oh, Eileen, oh yeah, I, the one that that snorts all the time. Oh, God. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I mean, and nobody set Eileen down and said, hey, Eileen, quit snorting. Uh-huh. You, you sound unprofessional, and it's annoying to everyone, and we all know you do it, because she probably has no idea she does it. I know. So I, I think that there's... As a partner, if, if you have if you have a partner that is doing these things, that you know smacks when they eat and doesn't keep their mouth closed, and one of the things that even as a guy that I I don't like is when we're out in public and somebody burps. Oh yeah. Like out loud, like I mean, just does they don't cover their mouth, they don't like try to like hold it in or or anything, they just let it rip. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not talking about stupid little kids goofing around. I mean, like, grown men mm-hmm. that do it, and then they may or may not even say, excuse me. I think the, I think what's worse for me is the them not saying, excuse me. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think that sometimes it could slip out. Or... Yeah, well, you see it slip out sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, and I've seen it slip out with women, and they're like, excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Like, yeah, but most guys... <laughs> I, I think that they, they have developed such poor table manners at home and around their families and with their friends that they just are completely unaware of their own, you know, stupid actions when they're out in public with that stuff. Um, you know, and that's inappropriate. <laughs> just yeah. be aware, control it. You shouldn't do stuff like that. But I, I think that, you know, you, you can look at a lot of that stuff that you see, but if, if your partner's doing those things that are socially unacceptable or social faux pas or can hurt their their chances at promotion or business sense or things like that, you need to do them the favor of of trying to help them correct their behavior mm-hmm. yeah. in the right manner. Not by screaming at them, not by yelling at them, not by calling them gross or an idiot, but helping them out. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I really do think uh, most of the time... Guys just don't realize that they're doing it. Yeah. They don't realize it until somebody says something. I know. That's extremely rude. What is? When you burp uh-huh. like that. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then they'll think about it next time. Hopefully. Uh-huh. I know. I know. I think about... I was I was telling you um, earlier that I don't even... I don't even tell you the little annoying thing that I would do with my ex. Um that he thought was annoying because Mm -hmm. 
I don't want you to, <laughs> to, to notice that, it. Yeah, to think that it's annoying. <laughs> but I think that, um, but with him telling me that it was annoying, I mean, at first I was like, oh, like I didn't realize that I was being annoying, mm -hmm. you know? And I didn't think that it would be annoying to someone else. But now I don't do it. Or if I do do it, it's like I realize what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, maybe I should stop because this could be annoying, annoying to somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that being, being self-aware yeah. <laughs> of but, what you're but doing. But you can't be self-aware until unless you know to be aware. Right. Yeah, exactly. So many things are just second nature. Mm -hmm. And you've been doing them so long, you don't realize it. I mean, one, one of the things I, I, I bring up, you know, I... I speak publicly very regularly. I'm standing in front of audiences quite often. We, we do this. Anybody that's watched the show or even you look on YouTube and all the pictures you see are like of the videos are my hands up. Mm -hmm. I, I talk with my hands, <laughs> yeah. especially when I'm making a point. And if someone ever said, Seth, your hands are horribly annoying how you move, it would mess me up so bad when I was speaking publicly. I wouldn't know what to do with my hands at that point. Mm -hmm. Um... And I've asked before because I know I talk with my hands. Mm -hmm. And I, when I teach other people how to teach, that's one of the first things I say. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I talk with my hands. Not everybody does that. Um, I move around when I talk. I can't stand at a podium with my hands on the edge and, and speak to a group like that. I, I have to walk around the stage. I have to move around. I have to engage and, and always be moving because I can't sit still. But those type of things like that, if somebody... And I'm sure at some point in time, somebody found it distracting. Mm -hmm. But if somebody was ever like, you need to quit doing that, that would, I would be very self-conscious yeah. the next time I started talking of like, oh shoot, I started to move my hands. I need to keep them right here to the point that I think the, the stiffness and the, the, you know, two by four look would be much more distracting to people. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I think that, well... And I think that you, I like that you talk with your hands. I think that, you know, you express yourself even better mm -hmm. because you do that. And I think that, I like it when people talk with their hands because I don't know, it's just like, <laughs> I see It emphasizes that. what you do. It does. <laughs> and it was, nobody ever like told me to do it when mm -hmm. I started talking. It was just something I naturally did. Yeah. And I think that when you look at what people naturally do... That's where it is once again, is it something that they can change? Is it something that's worth fighting about? Is it something that is worth hurting their feelings over? Is it something that not really you can live with, but are you overreacting to it? Mm -hmm. Are is, is what they're doing really that annoying? Um, or is it something that you need to deal with? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm trying to think of what a good example of that would be. Uh, but, you know, I think that th there's, once again, there, there's certain behaviors that are trainable. And I think that if, if you are, if you are putting your, your quote unquote pet peeves or dislikes or cons about your partner and everything is followed by a never, that's not a pet peeve. That's not something that's annoying. That is something that requires communication. So if, for example, if you're saying, well, my husband never cooks, mm -hmm. and my husband never cleans, and my husband never notices when I do this. And uh, I mean, can you say you're annoyed? Or, but are you really annoyed, or are you angry? Yeah. Because there's a, there's two, those are two completely different emotions. And if you're angry, then you're not annoyed. Mm -hmm. Are your feelings hurt? Do you feel you know like you're in one set of relationship? That's a much deeper conversation than a pet peeve. A pet peeve. Uh -huh. And that's, that's different. So if it's followed by, or if it's preceded by, they never do mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Yeah. That's a separate type of conversation. That shouldn't be going into the pet peeve uh -huh. box. Well, I think with that, with those, I think that they, you can control that. Or you, I think that most of the time it's going to be the, both people's fault really, but the person that is saying, well, I, I don't, I hate that my husband never does this or that mm -hmm. because most of the time they haven't told their husband, can you help me? Or ask yeah. their husband, can you help me? You know, can you please do this? And the husband, like most guys is going to be oblivious like, to yeah, it. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't even, I didn't know that you wanted my help with this. And and we've said it on here before. Men don't pick up on hints. I know. They don't. And and far too often these pet peeves or these annoying factors or these nevers whatever we're talking about come out of a place where one partner just expects their their partner to read their mind mm-hmm. or sincerely want to do something. Even if you are that sincere person that does think about that mm-hmm. and does say, you know, well, if, if I notice that my husband is sitting there and he's moving real stiff, I'll notice that and go over and say, hey, is your neck okay? Do you need a neck massage? There are people that are intuitive like that and pick up on those and do that. But you can't expect that that's how everybody else is going to be. Mm-hmm. And you may sit there like, oh, man, my neck hurts today. I had such a bad day. And he's like, oh, yeah, that sucks. And he's turned up TV. Yeah, I've just it's just been so much stress. And, oh, my neck's been stiff. And he's like, okay. But if you don't say, hey, Can my you? neck hurts. Could you please rub my neck? <laughs> Most guys aren't going to say, oh, hey, would you like your neck rubbed today? Uh-huh. Um, and hopefully that's not followed by... Yeah, but I'll rub your neck if you rub mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because you've got a, a bad partner there with that type of response. But most guys aren't going to pick up on even very blatant hints mm-hmm. that they should pick up on. Most guys just aren't. Um, and so you, you can't expect them to do that. Sometimes you have to call it out. And it's the same thing when it comes to these chores and things like that and you know, if, if, especially the nevers. My my husband never, you know, loads the dishwasher correctly. Mm-hmm. Well, have you showed him how to load the right. dishwasher? Yeah. Have you told him, hey, I cooked. Could you load the dishwasher tonight? I mean, how does that even come about? If he's trying to help and doing something wrong, do you, you know, shoo him away and say, you don't ever do anything right. I'll just do it myself. Because if you do that, you're no longer allowed to complain that they don't do that yeah, task anymore. Yeah, exactly. I if know. you don't like how they wipe the counters or clean the baseboards, or load the dishwasher, or you know, fix your sandwich, you're not allowed to complain anymore that they aren't doing it. Mm-hmm. If you think you do it better than they do, yeah. I and, and and I think a lot of people have problems with that also. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So, you know, and the, the other one that, that kind of comes up is this. You know, my, my husband never knows where X is. Where anything is, yeah. He doesn't know where to put the dishes out of the dishwasher. He doesn't know where the pots go. He doesn't know when we go grocery shopping. He doesn't know where, where to put what shelf them. the chips go on. He yeah. doesn't know where the vacuum's stored. Well, you have a part of this not contributing regularly enough. Yeah. That they should know. I mean, if they don't know where the pots and the pans and the plates go... You're telling me they've never pitched in and helped cook dinner at all. Yeah. If you're telling me they don't know which closet the vacuum is in, they've never helped you clean before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that you guys should be doing as a couple mm-hmm. and a partnership of the responsibility of your home. Right. Yes. Well, I think another thing is, and I know that there's people that, a lot of people that disagree with this and some that will probably agree but I think that people need to live with each other before getting married. Yeah. Because you're going to see all of these dumb little things. Mm-hmm. And like you said in the beginning, if you if they're annoying you even just a little bit now, how bad is it going to be later on? Yeah. Yeah. And and you you have to be honest and open with them through that through that period. Mhm. It's like a trial. Yeah, period. it's it's a great <laughs> trial run, and during that trial run, you, I don't want to say you're allowed to say anything, but that's your that's your probation period to get everything out in the open. Don't wait till you've been married three years, and then you have a blow up mm-hmm. over some completely unrelated topic, and then tie in everything they've done for the last three years or not done or can't do right, or all your pet peeves come flowing out at once, and that's. That's the biggest problem mm-hmm. that uh, people tend tend to tend to come up with. Um, but the living together is is a great opportunity to, to see what that's like, mm-hmm. you know. And I knew I know we were we were both pretty upfront with one another with the things in our previous relationships that we didn't like, and I, and I don't think. For for myself, I don't think I brought those up to say, well, I hope she doesn't do this, but 
I'm going to tell her what my ex did, did just in case she does, she'll stop. <laughs> it didn't come right. from that place. Right. I think it just, most of it was kind of like, oh, you actually open the hamper and put your clothes in the hamper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my ex never did that. Uh-huh. Or, oh, hey, you put all your makeup away after you got ready in the morning? My ex never did that. Uh-huh. Um, you know, or... Oh, hey, you put the towel back on the hanger yeah. instead of throwing it on the floor? My ex never did that. Yeah. And so I think it was more the realization that I wasn't living with the pet peeve annoying bad behaviors anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, that it was, I was living with someone that didn't do those. And I think that what probably happened was being so appreciative of coming from so many pet peeves and things that I didn't like and things I got annoyed at to the big ones that annoyed me didn't exist in our relationship that even if little ones had come up, it just was microscopic comparatively. So I just never noticed it or Uh it became a big deal or it never became a big deal. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's, once again, you, you have to have the bad to be able to appreciate the good. Yes. And that, that's where a lot of what we talk about, you know, including this, but if you're that couple that have been dating since you were, 18 to 24 years old you and you're still together you didn't you're bad is unfortunately with the person you're with right and so we i don't know if you'd say we had the privilege but (laughs) one one thing that i guess i don't know if you say gives us an advantage or not but our all of our negative feelings or or pent-up anger is with someone else Mm -hmm. (laughs) so we don't explode on one another because we aren't annoying pieces of shit that we've had to live with for <laughs> 9 to 12 years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we're not annoying to each other. Right. I don't know. And, like, I remember the... Well, I remember when we first started, like, whenever I started, like, sleeping over your house and stuff. And, and you telling me, you know, if I if I start snoring and and it bothers you, you can... Yeah, wake me up wake and tell me to roll over. Roll oh. over. And... Uh, lucky, lucky for Seth and for me, I guess. Yeah. I am just such a deep sleeper, mm-hmm. and I won't wake up for anything. Right. And uh, so that was that was really nice to be able to. And I'm the you. opposite. Oh. I'm a very light sleeper. Yeah. Um, and, so, and but I didn't know. I remember after, after the first night you stayed over. I, I was like, did I not snore or uh-huh. did she just not wake me up? And so I asked and you were like, no, you didn't, uh-huh. you didn't snore. Or if you did, it didn't wake me up. And I was like, cause I just spent 12 years getting kicked and clawed and pushed and, and smacked uh-huh. in the middle of the night because I was snoring. And then like, so then like we, it kind of continued and I was like, is she's, is she just being very nice? And, and you were like, it's just. You you may start to breathe heavy when you start to doze off, but you're not like, <sighs> yeah. And that's what I had come to believe. Uh, well, and I had, I had an English bulldog that snored way louder than <laughs> than, than <I> you <laughs> do before. Right. So you, your snoring wasn't nothing, anything compared to that. Right. But I I I think that it was because I am such a light sleeper. My ex would snore and wake me up. Oh. And she would not believe. that She, she thought was... that I was just saying that because she was saying I snore. Oh. And it wasn't a retaliation of, well, I'm going to convince her that she was... No, she would snore. Uh-huh. Um, I think I recorded her one night. <laughs> oh, my God. To try to prove that, you know, I wasn't making it up. Yeah. Um, but she would, she would snore. And... I think that ultimately the snoring thing became, I was like, well, you know, cause she would go to bed early and she would say, well, I've got to go to bed uh, before you, because if you fall asleep before me, you start snoring and I can't go to sleep. Mm-hmm. This ultimately led to us not sleeping together uh-huh. um, because of that. Now I say that as a very light sleeper, I could not sleep in the same bed with somebody that snored. Yeah. Um, I travel and I can hear if one of the idiot people in the rooms <laughs> near me is snoring and I won't sleep. Oh, gosh. Um, well, so, and when we, when uh, the first night that I brought my dog over to spend the night, 
my dog, he does this little thing where he's, when he's really happy, <laughs> he starts like squeaking. It's like a squeak and a wheeze. Yeah. Because he does it when he's, when he's exhaling and inhaling. Uh -huh. He does it both ways. Yeah. And. But it's not like a whistle. No. Yeah. It's just, it is like more like a wheeze, mm -hmm. huh? And so, yeah, he, he does that and. Seth thought, he was like, oh man, I don't know, this is... I was like, what the is that hell noise? is that? <laughs> yeah, and his little blade mm -hmm. just squeaking, and I'm like, oh, he's happy, but... If you tell him you, to stop, he stops. Yeah, or if you, you know, tap yeah. on him or whatever, he'll stop. Yeah. But um, you are like, oh, like, I don't know if I'm going to yeah, do it I'm once gonna I... just sleep with this dog in the room. Yeah. That ain't gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> but he he quits and he doesn't do it all night. Uh-huh. And he doesn't do it in the middle of the night. He uh -huh. does it when he first lays down to go to bed. Yeah. And that's it. Um <laughs> And yeah, and luckily the dogs, neither one of the dogs do noise things in the middle of the night. Uh-huh. Dooney climbs on me or gets me super hot. Yeah. But she doesn't make any noises during the night that yeah like your cat yeah, yeah i had a cat with my ex that sucked its tail <laughs> and would grab its tail all through all hours of the night and <laughs> and start smacking on its tail Gross. used to dry I'd put tape on that cat's tail i put hot sauce on that cat's oh tail. my gosh i did anything and everything i could to get that stupid cat to quit doing that and he never would quit <laughs> Uh, I would throw him off the bed uh -huh. and, you know, just anything I could to get him to quit and ruin many a night of my sleep because <laughs> I'm such a light sleeper with that stuff. Jeez. But with the snoring, I, I think that 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 is one of those things that kind of goes in this category of most of the time they don't, your partner doesn't realize that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And is it, I, I try to think of other things that affect your all around quality of life mm -hmm. when it comes to pet peeves. Somebody not putting the toilet seat down doesn't affect your quality of life. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you know, that uh, pees in the shower isn't affecting your quality of life. Yeah. Now, if you're in the shower and they're peeing on you and you're not into that, I guess that would be. <laughs> and you're not into that. Yeah, but, you know, the, most of the pet peeves that people have or people cite in their partners aren't really, at the end of the day, ruining their quality of life. Uh-huh. But I do think snoring does. Yeah. And once again, I'm biased because I am a light sleeper. That. But you're also a snorer too. Right. Uh -huh. That I, I think that if you had come into this and was like, you know what, you, you do snore, and you snore all night, and you snore very loudly. I would. You're left with okay. What can I do to fix this? Yeah. Um, because I went there with, with my ex when we lived in the desert of California. The dryness for the rest of my life ruined my sinuses. Mm -hmm. um, and the Navy doctors put me on, you know, these allergy pills and this allergy sinus spray that's different than like Afrin or things like mm -hmm. that. But it was this highly concentrated, this was before Flonase and all that came out. Oh. Um, and they had me use that every night. They're like, you need to use this every night because your passages are just getting clogged up. Um, they didn't have the no strips out yet or any of that stuff. So I had to do that and kind of like hold my head down, almost stand on my head to get it to drain basically into my whole nasal cavities in oh, my brain. Wow. Uh -huh. And that was supposed to clear me up. Well, though that spray, what it did to my sinuses was I can't breathe now if I don't have... That. nose sinus spray uh -huh. um, and so I'm basically addicted to Afrin or whatever it is to keep my my nose clear um, and if I'm in a more humid climate I don't need it as much mm -hmm. but like even when we lived in in Colorado I had to have it with me all the time mm -hmm. uh, because it would just I would just get so stopped up in in dry climates but that wreaked havoc on my sinuses to the point that it was affecting how I slept but I didn't have sleep apnea i wouldn't stop breathing where i needed a mask and mm -hmm. and things like that and so we tried little things here and there to see if it would help and, <clears throat> and and it would kind of it would help here and there and and i thought it would be enough to change but then once once i lost my job and was working 
and got a new job working in the middle of the night, mm-hmm. she got used to not sleeping in the same bed uh, with me for months. Mm-hmm. And so when I came back, even though I wasn't snoring, the heavy breathing was too much. Oh, wow. Jeez. And so it was just like, that's when I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll just start sleeping in the basement. Yeah. And then, uh-huh. then you don't have to worry about it. And yeah. It's not that big of a deal. But I think that 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 is something that if, if if your partner snoring is ruining your sleep and you aren't getting enough sleep and it's affecting your job and it's affecting your sleep patterns and and all that stuff they need to go to sleep study they need mm-hmm. to figure out what they can do what do they have to wear at night what can they take to at night because i, I couldn't imagine being on the flip side of that mm-hmm. of being like oh my gosh i can't i haven't gotten any sleep at all this is because if i don't get decent sleep it's it's awful Mm -hmm. um and because of the pets i usually don't get great sleep yeah anyway but yeah duty especially but um yeah so so i think that that's the the that's one that really takes a a little added conversation deep conversation as far as you know what can we do and And, and that and don't and don't do the kicking and the and and it that that's really something that should from a guy's perspective that shouldn't hurt their feelings Mm -hmm. to be like you snore because a lot of guys snore oh sorry well Mm -hmm. no but you snore really loud and like i got maybe an hour's worth of sleep last night Mm -hmm. because of it so we need to fix this and you don't find that out until you're living with somebody yeah Um, exactly and, and and so you need to at least have some kind of sleepover to see what's going on. Is yeah. it something that can be fixed by just throwing another pillow under him? Uh-huh. You know, do you need to get a different mattress that holds him from rolling over or, or whatever it is? But that's something that requires probably a, a deeper look at what solutions could be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it, well, it, um, so you were telling me about. And, you know, after sleeping and, and all that and and your ex complaining about you snoring and all that, she would sn- uh, hit the snooze button. She was a snooze waker upper, which is the worst type of bed mate. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure people that live with a snorer would counter that with next to a snorer. Yeah. But yeah, the the that was that was one of my bigger pet peeves with her was she would hit snooze for two fucking hours before she had to get out of oh bed my to try to mentally trick herself that she somehow got to sleep in. Uh-huh. But all she would do is ruin the last two hours of her sleep and mine uh-huh. in the yeah. process and then still wake up exhausted, still have to drag her ass out of bed, still be in a bad mood. And I was like, look, here's, here's all this information that says how awful that is. You should not start your day snoozing. You should not hit that snooze alarm. You should set it and get it up when it goes off. And if you know you can't wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and you don't have to be at work till 8.30, and you can literally sleep in till 6 or 6.30, then set it for 6 or 6.30. Yeah. But don't set it for 4 a.m. just to go through the snooze process every nine minutes for two hours Mm -hmm. just to somehow trick yourself that you've, I mean, that's like some psychopathic weird shit that I don't understand the thought process behind. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. A lot. And it's so awful for your sleep cycle to do that. Yeah. Cause I just wake up Mm -hmm. when, if my alarm, you know, if it's set or whatever, I guess I don't have to set it very often anymore. Yeah. But I just wake up. Well, or we, I'll wake up a couple minutes before we, it goes we off. Are, we are pretty good natural wakers. Yeah. We just, our bodies wake up at the same time, even on the weekends usually, which it's a curse because if mm-hmm. we stay up really late, you know, guaranteed we're still, and I guess I probably wake up a little earlier than you. Yeah, you do. But um, I have to rely on alarm when I go on travel because if I'm in a different time zone yeah, and my body's true. used to waking up I at have. seven, but now I'm in, you know, New York or the East coast or whatever. And I've got to be up an hour early and mm-hmm. it's going to feel like five to me. I've got to set an alarm, but I don't set it so I can hit snooze, hit snooze, hit snooze, hit snooze. Um, and even on the rare occasions that I hit snooze, I don't go back to sleep. Oh, remember that one guy that, uh, was and I was sleeping pounding on the on the wall. <laughs> yes, yeah. that was so annoying. Yeah, yeah. The neighbor in the hotel was was doing that. He was a snooze sleeper, and that thing would start going off. Or he would 
I think one of them, he got up and like got in the shower and it was going off while he was yeah. in the shower or something. I'm pounding on the wall. Um, and then had was to that like in Tennessee? Call the... was that no, in... it was in Oklahoma City. Oh, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Ruined my sleep. Yeah. It absolutely ruined my morning sleep. Yeah, it was awful. That sucked. Yeah, that was so irritating. Mm-hmm. And again, if somebody would tell him, <laughs> yeah, dude, don't do that. He well, would I, be... I told my ex for 12 years not to do that. I know. It didn't do any good. Uh, that's true. But you're ruining other people's sleep mm-hmm. in hotels, too. And that's one of those things that is completely controllable. It's different than snoring. Yeah. You can control it. You are in control of when you hit snooze and how you set your alarm. Somebody can't really help con- or control if they're a snorer or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so not, not all pet peeves or annoying qualities are equal. I think that there are yeah. some that... You know, we talked about the, the nevers or things that I don't really think belong in that. That's that's something that is more of a, a relational relational issue. I don't know if that's a word or not, but um, but then those that are the the behavior training aspects of putting the toilet paper on right, putting the you know this toilet seat down, putting you know wiping your shave clippings out of your the sink, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I, you know, I think that one of the things that you, you tend to see is in, in playing with the devil's advocate when a woman is like, my husband never cleans his beard hair, shave trimmings out of, out of his sink and I have to do that. And the guy says, yeah, but there's about four pounds of your head hair in the shower drain. Mm-hmm. She says, well, I'm the one that cleans the shower anyway. So, mm-hmm. but it's like, no, but even then... I've cleaned your hair out of the shower because it'll get down a little hole and I'll just notice that it's draining slow. Yeah. And I pull it all out and I don't make a big deal about it. Yeah. I'm not like, ugh, what are you doing? And like leave it in there or something. Yeah. Like, you know, to show. Right. You here's here's what I did. Yeah. I did this because it, you're in, once again, you can't control how much hair falls out of your head when you take a shower. Yeah. And, and most women can't. Uh-huh. So... It's not something that a guy should hold against them, mm-hmm. but it ends up being, you know, th- those end up being a, a point of contention. And I think that one of the really incorrect ways that people handle this is one partner goes into the, the when they finally decide to communicate it, which is usually at the wrong time mm-hmm. and at the wrong tone and the wrong manner. They come at it not really realizing that they are just as annoying as the person they're getting yeah. at, just in different things. Mm-hmm. And they aren't prepared for the partner to retaliate with their list. <laughs> oh, and gosh. then it just ends up in this huge explosion of a fight. Yeah. Um, I know. Well, and, and you said that happened to you. And that's exactly what happened to us was she decided to unload. And while she's unloading, you know, I'm I'm getting my clip ready and throwing <laughs> my bullets in there. As she's listening, I'm like, all right, well, as soon as she shuts oh her gosh. yapper, I'm going to let her know yeah. all the annoying shit she does, too. Uh-huh. And then it turned into this this very unhealthy um, gotcha kind of game mm-hmm. where, you know, it was I, – I would wait for her to take her clothes off and put them on the hamper so I could be like, ha, ah, see? You didn't put them in the hamper again. Lift up – how hard is it to do this? Look, look. Takes half a second. How hard is it to do that? Just put them in the goddamn hamper. You know, and then she would do the same thing to me. And so yeah. it turned into this, this, instead of us looking at what the other person said and fixing it, uh-huh. it became, you're way more annoying than I am. Uh-huh. And when you start heading down that path, A, you're not looking for any good qualities in your partner no. anymore. You're only looking for the negative. Uh-huh. And B, when you're looking for the negative... Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, guess what the fuck you're going to find all the time is negative. Negative, yeah. And, and those are two very damaging pieces of the puzzle where you should see the most positive attributes of your partner. Mm-hmm. And, and little things become big things. And unfortunately, that really applies heavily in the negative side. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's, that yeah that's very true that that becomes that's where you just wake up one day and you're like I'm miserable I just don't like this person because you've been pointing out to yourself and to them all the things they do that you don't like mm-hmm. and you just forget about the stuff that you do you like. did like uh-huh. and and that's hard to come back from to get that back 
because it's once you've pushed that aside and you've now compiled this massive amount and list of cons, the pros just completely get outweighed. I know. Um, and that's why we say bring it up when it happens. Yeah. Have the conversations in a constructive manner that's not pointing the finger, that's not one-upmanship. And if you're the one bringing it up, have a have the fucking common sense to have a little bit of self-reflection yes, and lead in the conversation. Now, I know, that, I know that I grind my teeth at night. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm not perfect with cleaning up my side of the sink. I know that I have these flaws, mm-hmm. and I'm working on that. And I know that you don't point those out to me probably as much as you could. Mm-hmm. But there's been something going on that I do want to bring to your attention. And I think that if you start off by throwing your faults out there first. Yeah. They'll, they'll be more understanding. They'll be more understanding. Because yeah. they'll be like, well, at least, at least they're able. I almost said she because I, once again, I see this. Most men aren't the ones that do this. Mm-hmm. They're not or the ones. The that, ones bringing they're not up. the ones that say, oh, honey, sit down. We're going to have to talk about your, your, your annoying things that just drive me nuts around this house. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, we, we, we've listened to other couples talk about this where if you say, okay, husband, write down five things that annoy you about your wife. And wife, write down five things that annoy you about your husband. The wife has five things oh, like that. easily. That yeah. she's going to come up uh-huh. with very quickly. The husband's like really trying to think. And, and, and I think that that's, if you really step back and look at that, that's very sad. It is. That the husband, and I don't want to give the men too much credit because I do <laughs> think that 50 at least at least 50% of it is due to they're just oblivious. Uh-huh. Not that they just care so much. Uh-huh. But the other 50% is, well, I've never really sat down and thought about the, the annoying things. things. Uh-huh. And, and But the wife has been like, oh, well, they do this. Chalking they them do up that. every yeah, time they do it. They turn uh-huh. into the scorekeeper. Right. And once, once you play that first game... You have now just opened the floodgates. And that's, once again, that's the exact same thing that happened to me. Mm-hmm. I, I hadn't really thought about it. I hadn't, it didn't mean enough to argue about it. It didn't mean enough that it had affected my quality of life. I didn't walk around with a grudge or a chip on my shoulder about how she did these things or didn't do those things. And while I may have been aware that when I came home from work and I went to go put my clothes in the hamper, I would see hers. I would pick him up, lift it, and drop him in, and then take mine off. Yeah, that was not a big deal to me. Well, but it then, became but then a big deal. Once you're going to tell me what my flaws are, uh-huh. you, you don't throw stones, you know, at a glass house, and that's exactly what it was. Uh-huh. It was all right, little Miss Perfect. We're <laughs> we're going to put your shit out on the table now too. Right. And and then it's just, it's very very hard to come back from mm-hmm. um, when you approach it in that manner. Mm-hmm. So I think humble yourself. Look at your own flaws. Yeah. Start working on those or at least point out, you know, that you know what they are. And that's probably the most constructive way to have the conversation. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think that's a really good point to to do it that way. To to bring up, you know, because I guess even like they tell you, you know, when you're a supervisor and stuff, you have meetings with your with your employees, mm-hmm. you know, to, to always, you know, if you if there's something bad, like to do a good, bad... Yeah, good, or, bad, good, bad, good. You want to end on good. Start with good, end on good. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think that it's a good, that's a good point to bring it up that way. Mm-hmm. Like, well, yeah, you know, I realize that these are some of the things that I'm doing and, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to work on these, mm-hmm. these things. And, and, cause I told, I told you, like, earlier that I... You know, I know that there's dumb little things that I do, and I'm, and, you know, we both do dumb little, little things that could probably annoy somebody, but, you know, I, I brought up the, the thing where, you know, I'll just take off my clothes in the, in the the closet closet. and just leave my clothes there until the next day or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you do the same. Yeah, and that's immediately what I said. Well, I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. and so I can't get on to you when I see your clothes on the closet floor right. because I do the same damn thing. Mm-hmm. So, yes, look at yourself. See what you are doing wrong. I would say see what you're doing wrong and and, and bring it up 
with your what you're doing wrong instead of trying to fix what you do wrong first and then bring it up to them. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because right. then you're you're gonna be like, Well, I've been trying to do all of this, this and this and you haven't done shit. Mm-hmm. You know? I think that Well and if if you're sitting there trying to think of good things to say about your partner and you can't come up with any you you bought the uh, fixer upper, so you either need to fix it up and flip it, or just sell it off and let somebody else flip it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, you don't you don't want a, a a deep dive project partner with all that stuff. I think most of these things are fixable, or like I said earlier, pick your battles. Yeah. What's what's affecting you the most? What's annoying you the most? Mm-hmm. What? Do you feel it needs immediate attention and start from there? But you don't want to land blast them with a list of 10 things that they do that drive you nuts mm-hmm. uh, all at once. And, and the best way to not do that is to communicate as it's happening because you're going to develop that mental list and you're going to keep track and you're going to keep score and that list is all going to get revealed at one time or another mm-hmm. all at once in a fight. Yeah. Um, and most people I think would agree that the fight that had nothing to do with anything was deep rooted into one of those or two of those or five of those things on that list that you find annoying. Yeah. It really wasn't the incident. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that we, that's typically how we argue anyway. Yeah. That's how people um, are period with, you know, period. Yeah. With, I, I remember even. I would do that with, with my son when it wouldn't really just be that he didn't clean his room. It's that he didn't clean his room and he had bad grades and he, you know, went off school property for lunch and missed fourth period. And he, you know, didn't tell me what he's doing. So it ended up being all of these little things that I blew up at at once. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you, you know, you see the same thing on social media mm-hmm. all the time. Where when somebody finally decides they're going to lash out at somebody, you, you realize in that lashing out that it's been multiple things that they never brought up before yeah um and so we do that with with people we care about and we do that with partners that we're with and people we love but that's not a loving way of handling no, it at all it's not um, and and you need to understand that when it comes to if you have a partner that i mean hopefully you don't have a partner that you bring those things up and they're like well too bad mm-hmm. you got what you got when you married me mm-hmm. um that's a that's a, a pretty tough look you're gonna have to take at that <laughs> i know yeah i know well i yeah i think that's a that about wraps it up for for our episode today um but yeah just be be understanding i think joke about it <laughs> that's what we've been doing it's funny because you know we're preparing for the episode and and we've been uh, just kind of joking around with each other mm-hmm. all day long about, oh, that's, that's number 38. Yeah, that's number 38 on the list of yeah. things you do. <laughs> yeah. And that it's piece. just been funny. Yeah, it yeah. has been. Yeah, joke around <laughs> with each other. That's, I think that's always fun to just D- play, play with it. Yeah, you know, don't, st- stay away from the, the sewing circle mentality and the bitch sessions. I think that some people think that that feels good. Mm-hmm. To find that commonality of, oh my gosh, yeah, here's, and we've talked about that in way, in much different aspects, but you find this collective group of other people that are in similar situations, similar situations with similar partners that are doing similar things, and you're all like, oh, we have all this in common that we're all married idiots or whatever it is mm-hmm. that aren't doing anything, but what what is that solving? Yeah. That's not fixing what's going on in your own house. Right. So instead of bitching to 50 other people going through this it shouldn't be a support group Uh you should sit down with your partner and actually fix it yeah and you're all all of you are continually to continuing to talk negatively about your partner and that's not good yeah you shouldn't be talking about your 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 your, keep what happens at home at home Mm -hmm. you shouldn't be talking negative about your partner on a on a radio station poll to a a you know whatever, you know, I hate men, but I'm a strong mom post, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. you shouldn't be land blasting your partner like that. I know. Uh, I know. And we even brought up that like, uh, about like doing a poll on this or having, you know, just even asking a question, like, 
what annoys what's you. Weird. What's the number one thing that annoys you about your partner? Yeah, and it's like it's no, not constructive. It's we not don't want to do that. Yeah. We're not we're not about that. We don't want you to complain about your partner. We want you to fix those things to where you're not complaining about your partner. Right. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, um, I think again that's a good ending to mm-hmm. the episode. As always, thank you all for listening. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, listen in on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, all of that. And we will talk to you next week. Thanks.